In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to make an enemy follow a path. And as a bonus, in the end of this video, I'll teach you how you can make sure that that enemy is being drawn in the correct draw order using Wise Sword Notes. Let's get started. To get us started, I've created this brand new scene and we'll be going over path following first. We'll create a 2D scene as this is a 2D tutorial and we'll add two nodes to this node 2D and both of them I want to quickly summarize in a nutshell. The path 2D is nothing more than a couple of locations on the map that a, drawn, a line is drawn between. That's basically going to be the path. And then we have path follow which will become a child of path 2D. And path follow is nothing more than a helper node that gives you a couple of functions that you can very easily make something run along the path that is path 2d so how does that look first we'll add the path 2d path 2d has a couple of helper buttons up here that pop open when you select it and these will be adding a new point in the path to delete a point in the path to complete the curve to already close the curve so when you're almost finished with your path and you want to make 100% sure that it looks exactly right this will be able to um, to quickly close that curve very easily we can select control points and shift them around and we can select points we can also drag them around but we will also be able to round the curvature so what we do is we take a, a couple of new uh, locations we'll simply be clicking and adding and to make complete this rectangle I'll be using the closed curve and as you can see now we got a closed rectangle then what we can do we can for example take the um, this one uh, the the uh, drag and drop the select you can for example drag this around no problem at all um, and you can also with a shift you can round this path around so we can round the curvature into something a little bit oval shaped and here there's actually two control nodes this will go one by one so we have one here and we have one there so now we got a little bit of a round path now we want to be adding the path follow to the to this and when you add this path follow to the there's a couple options that you get because this this path follow is basically gonna set a children to follow this path but it can be able to it can do a couple of things with that children. You can rotate it, which is something that we do not want because we have an isometric example. If you're true top down, then you can use rotate to immediately make sure that the uh, the nose of the enemy is uh, pointing in the right direction. Cubic interpolate, not important for us, but also no reason to, uh, to turn it off. You also want to make sure that you don't get any weird rotation degrees because that will also screw up your art and, and not make it draw straight up. So you want to set that back to zero. Now with that done, we can add an enemy. And we have an enemy standing by to help us to demonstrate this. Now this enemy, when we have a look at it, is uh, the web that you have seen in previous tutorial, my player movement tutorial, and has also starred on a couple of my tile map tutorials. This enemy already has a script to it, and this script is pretty much similar to the player movement uh, script of the last tutorial that I've made. We have a speed and a move direction. We call the movement loop in the physics process engine and the animation loop in the process function. The movement loop is currently empty because that's what we'll be programming the code together for the path follow um, code. And we have the animation loop. And this animation loop is a little bit different than the player movement animation loop because with the player movement the tutorial I did last week was with WSAD uh, movement so key input and that only gave us eight possible directions or eight possible player input combinations through which we have to determine which animation has to play now however with this path this um, enemy can walk in pretty much any sort of degrees in 360 degree space he can move in any direction and probably in this path being oval shaped every single degree will probably be happening somewhere along this path now of course this sprite sheet of this enemy still only has eight directional movement but we do need to distillate from the degrees in which it is moving which direction it actually is going so that will be the distilling out of the movement loop so let's get started on that movement loop and make sure that this werebear is walking around in circles 
Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you want to learn more about Godot? Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. I also stream my own game development live every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. And we got a Discord server up in case you got any extra questions about these tutorials or about game development in general. So check those links in the schedule out in the description box below. And now let's continue with Path Follow 2Ds. Now, as I said before, this Path Follow 2D is a helper node that will allow you to make use of functions to make the childs of Path Follow 2D follow the path of Path 2D. So we need to make sure that in the code of the enemy, we're making use of that Path Follow 2D functions. To do that, we're going to make sure that once the enemy has loaded in, that on ready we create a new variable, and that variable will be a Path Follow. We'll call it Path Follow. Now, with that inside there, we can now add this piece of code. It's only four lines long, and with those four lines, this enemy will be walking around in circles. Let me walk you through how this actually works. First, we have the pre-position, so the previous position. That will be the path follow, so that will be the reference to the path follow. And we get the global position. Now, the global position is based, basically, you can sort of imagine that there's like a little dot that's walking around this path uh, 2D and that will be the path follow and we can offset the point where that point is on the path we can offset it with a length and that length will automatically follow the curvature of the path so when we follow or when we get the global position of the path follow it will be where the dot is at that moment in time on that particular path so we first get the previous position. That is what we need in the move direction calculation. It doesn't actually do something for the movement, but we do need it to calculate an angle later on. To do the actual movement, we take the path follow and we set an offset. And for that offset, we're going to get the current offset, so the offset it already has. If it, for example, has already moved 600 pixels on the path, we want to get that 600 pixels. And then we want to add the little amount of pixels that it should be adding on this particular frame of the physics process engine. So we have the delta here from the physics process engine that is a fractal of um, maybe 0.03 or something like that. Then we'll pass it into the movement loop, so we have it available here. We take the speed of the enemy, in this case 150, and we multiply it by delta. So basically they will give, this will give us a, a very few amount of pixels that will have to be added to the current offset to follow further along the path. Then what we do is we get the current get global position of the path follow after the offset has been applied. That will be the current position. And then for the move direction to determine where, in which direction the player, or in this case the enemy, is moving, we'll calculate the angle between the position and the preposition. And that's why we needed to get this preposition before we set the offset, because else, if we, of course, we don't have access to that previous position anymore. Now, I prefer to work with degrees instead of radials. You can also work with radials in that case you can just uh, change this animation loop and instead of 15 degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees, you can just make that radius. I prefer with the, to work with degrees, makes my code more readable. Um, that's a personal preference. To turn that into degrees instead of radius, you divide by pi, 3.14, and multiply by 180 degrees because that's how Godot works in the radial sphere. So with this, we should be able to now play this scene. And I'm only going to play this scene. Of course, I have to save it. Uh, I've already made an example previous to this. So we'll save that path follow example. And as you can see, oh, we get a... Uh... Well, <laughs> yeah, for the path follow, of course, we we'll have to set that this is the get parent. That is a little bit silly of me. So the enemy uh, has to get the path follow. That's where all these functions link into. So we get the parent of the enemy, which will be path follow 2D, uh, so that we'll be able to access all those functions. Uh, so let's start it up again. And now you see that our enemy is following along this path 2D. And as soon as he's switching to one of his eight, uh, his, his eight directional thresholds, which we have determined by the degrees, you see that the, the animation loop is making sure that the enemy is walking with his nose in the right direction. So now that we have this, we can have a look at how this will look on a map and we'll see what errors we're going to be walking into when we're using Y sort, something that's very common in 2D art, especially in Godot. Um, we'll run into some problems and I'll teach you how to fix those as well. 
Right, let's dive straight into the problem that you may be encountering using Path Follow 2D and Weissel. Right here, we got a little bit of a scene. Some of you might recognize it from my tile map series. And right here, we have a bridge which has a, a main bridge um, texture and this railing as a separate texture. And we have the player in our Y sort nodes. Make sure that the player can walk over this bridge and everything is drawn correctly. What you may have tried yourself is to add another nested Y sort here with patrol paths, add your path to D, add your follow to D, and then add your enemy, expecting that the enemy will be drawn correctly in the correct draw order. But regretfully, that's not the case. The enemy is just walking underneath this bridge. The reason why this happens is that the uh, y sort node is sorting all its children in the correct draw order by, based on the y coordinate. So path to d is drawn correctly, but that is not passed along to path follow to d, and that's not passed along onto the enemy. And that's the problem. That's the reason why the y sort node doesn't really work in this way. This enemy is way too deep into the y sort tree to be recognized as something that needs to be y sorted. So we can fix that using a third node that we have not used before, and that's going to be the remote transform 2D. Well, let's get into that. So to fix this, what I'll be doing is just like we have blocked areas here, I'll be adding a new node and that will also be in node 2D. Now that node 2D is simply going to be in container node. Onto that node 2D, I'll add this path as this node 2D is going to be our patrol paths. Now with our patrol paths there, we can rename this patrol paths to enemies. And that enemy that we have right here, I'll be adding it onto that scene. You see now this enemy is directly under a Y sort node, so now it will be correctly drawn. Now we just need to make sure that this enemy still follows that path. And we do that by adding a remote transform 2D to this node. Now this remote transform 2D comes up with an exclamation mark because help, I need something. What you need to do to this remote transform 2D is you need to add it or you need to add another node to it because this remote transform will be taking its own location and maybe even rotation and even scale and it'll be pushing it to another node in the scene tree. So you have to remote path here, you can see this assign, you click on it and then the node structure will open up and we're going to be selecting the enemy that we've just added on straight under the Y sword and we'll press OK and that makes that orange pop-up disappear. Now in the update right here, you can select what you want this uh, remote transform to push towards this enemy node. Now we want of course the position to push, but the rotation not so much and the skill that's not necessary right now either. It wouldn't hurt, that, that wouldn't create a problem, but we don't need it right now, so we might as well leave that uh, off the table. Now, with this done, this script of the enemy has a, a couple of problems because when this gets its parent, it will now get the Y sort called enemies. It will not get the path follow 2D. So what we actually need to do is we need to make sure that this it becomes the, oh, the remote transform. And for that, we're gonna get the nodes. And then we need to go, up to one parent, then we need to up a second parent, then we need to go up a third parent, and then we need to go down to patrol pass. So how we do that is we go dot dot, oh, in quotations, this is the first parent, second parent, third parent, then we go into patrol pass. Now we can go easily to this path follow to D because that's what we need to be looking for. So we're going to copy this no path and we can just simply pass that over here and then we'll close it with the quotations. And now we have access to that particular path follow 2D. Now we can take this remote transfer and we can say, no, this is you. And the path follow is going to be you. And this path follow is going to be the remote transfer. And this path follow will be remote transfer. And now we're basically setting the, um, the offset that this creature will calculate itself. So using this method, you can still have different enemies, maybe with different speeds, will set different offsets 
per physics frame. But this creature is now going to be setting the path follow to the offset through the code that we made earlier. We just approach it differently. That path follow 2D will automatically transform the location of its child, remote transfer 2D. And remote transfer will then pass back that changed location based on path follow to the enemy as we have linked that up in the remote path. So what you see now when we play this script is that this enemy is now following along, the Y sword is going correctly and it will be drawn in the correct order while, keeping, while it keeps following that path. Now of course there's many possibilities that this code will give you, I'll leave it up to your creativity to use this into something awesome in your game. That was it for today guys, if you found this helpful please smash that like button, hit subscribe, don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. And as always, don't forget to look me up on my Twitch stream, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday where I'm streaming the game development of my own title called Soul Whisperer. I hope to see you there one day and until then, keep on coding and keep on gaming. See you later guys.